guys, what is up? It's Wayward Fish back here again with another tutorial video. So today we are going to be going over how to make a flight plan, how to input that into the FMC or flight management computer, and how to use autopilot during flight. Alrighty guys, let's get into it. So the software I use is called Simbrief. You can make a free account and it's very easy. Alright, so once you've made an account, Go to dispatch, go to my flight plan. I already have one going, but you're going to click new flight. And this is going to come up. So we need three things. We need the aircraft type. We need where you're coming from and where you're going. So let's say I'm going to go from KTPA or Tampa Bay to KIAH. All right. So that's. Tampa Bay to Houston. All right. You can look up those codes if you want. Um. So we're gonna get the seven thirty-seven eight hundred right here. That's our plane right now, and that's basically all you need for the moment. You're gonna see this, and you're also gonna see these. These are very important. All right. But for now, we're gonna generate this flight plan right here. So once this generates, it's gonna give us everything we need in one small document. Well, it's not really small, but it's a document. So if we come down here, we see the map. I just flew this route earlier today. It took a while, but it definitely worked. And this paperwork preview is what we're gonna need. So a few things to note on this. First, we're going to need the cost index or CI right here, okay? Next, this is going to be our flight level, flight level 360, or 36,000 feet. That's going to be our normal cruising feet, altitude. Then if we scroll down, this is going to be our routing. It's the same format every time, just the information changes. So, these are the only three things we're really going to need right now. All right, just for us to notice, this is called a SID. It's a standard instrument departure. Instrument departure. This is a star. These are, oh, that's the star actually. That's uh, the airport. So these two things are very important for putting in the fly plan. We're going to get there in a minute and I'm going to show it to you. But when we input this into the FMC, we're going to need those two things. And also, the last thing I'm going to tell you about this is whenever you see DCT, it's not a waypoint, it means direct. All right? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head into next plane right now. Now that we're in the plane, uh, I've already pre-started the engines and all of that, everything should be working right now. And we're gonna head on over to the FMC or flight management computer. So a lot of people say this is the most complicated part of the plane, and they're probably right. This is where you're going to input your um, autopilot flight plan, all that. So, first of all, it's going to say nav data out of date. It might not for you, but it does for me sometimes. And this is where it is. It's called the scratch pad, all right? That's where you're going to input information into the FMC. So I'm going to click clear, and that's going to clear that out of the scratch pad. If we go to the FMC... It's going to give us some just small minor details about the plane. Nothing here we need to know. We're going to go to position initialization. So you're probably going to have some boxes right here. And it's going to have and it's going to need your position. Now, I do not have those because it's already now in my position right now. But if you do have that, you're going to go to the next page. You're going to tap there. That's going to go in your scratch pad. Go to previous page and input into that into the boxes. Now I'm going to clear this out of the scratch pad right here. And I'm going to go to reference airport, which is KTP, where is P, A. Reference airport. And that's going to, as you see, it's going to have the thing right next to it, and it matches to our last position. So, I don't know where gate, I think it's B11. I could be wrong. Gate does not really matter for the FMC at all. Um... So that's pretty irrelevant. If you like to put it in, you can. Um, so first we're gonna go root. So a nice little thing that it does is it keeps you where your your reference airport and it puts that right there in your scratch pad for you to put it into origin. 
and then the only thing you need to do is destination. So our destination is K-I-A-H, or Houston. All right, make up a random flight number if you want. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so next, we have runway. So first thing we're actually going to need the other thing with is we're going to come on over to here, bring you over. So we're going to scroll down. Um, I went way past it. If we go on from the top, if we scroll down, we're going to get to routing right here. So this is going to have all the information you need right now. So this runway, zero, 01 left, is going to be your main, is the runway you're taking off from right now. And the runway we're landing at is 15 right. All right, just to keep that in mind, we're going to put that back over there. But that's basically what we're going to do. So now we're going to put the runway in. So it's z zero, one left. That's your runway. And then we're going to go to perf in it because we've filled out everything we need to there. So this is where your cost index is going to come in. So remember I highlighted at the beginning, CI, your cost index. It varies. Mine in this case is five. And for your fuel reserves, I always put in 2.5 because that is the number one thing. That's basically what I always use. Um, it works out every time because that's the amount of reserves you're going to have to get the maximum amount of flight time in the, um, in the um, plane. So next, we're, it's going to automatically fill out the zero fuel weight. And you just tap on it. And the other the last thing we need from this, from the documentation, is your cruising altitude. So remember that was flight level 360. It's 36,000 feet, but if you just put in 360, it's going to say flight level 360. So, next, you're going to see this yellow bar came over the execute light. If you tap on execute, that's going to make the plan final. Not just um, like a draft, final. Because you're actually going to input it. So, next, we're going to go to N1 limit. It's going to automatically detect the temperature. Just tap on that. We're going to go to take off. I always use flat five flaps in normal weather like it is right now, but if it's snowing, raining hard, I would use 10 just to be safe. So as you see, that calculates our V2 speed, or the speed you rotate at. You pull back on the stick to take off. Now we need to take that 156 right there, and we need to input that into the MCP. Uh, it was 156, correct, into the MCP. This is where you control your autopilot. We're gonna get there in a minute. So now that we have this in, we can go to root. Now I said we already filled this out, but we're gonna go to the next page and you see we didn't. So basically, the next thing we need to do is we're gonna come back here. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna take this routing. It's gonna say skies eight, Gilco four. So that's the SID and the star, and then you're gonna have DCT or direct to a point. All right. So we're going to take the information we have there and we're going to put this in. So it says direct to R E M I S. So we're going to go R E I M M M M I. Did I screw this up? Yes, I did. Because I don't know how to spell. All right, that should do it. Um, we're gonna go directly there, and now that we have that, don't click activate. Not yet. We're gonna go to departure arrival, and we're gonna put in the sit and the star. So the departure, we're gonna t click on departure right here, and you're gonna see that we have this. So these are your sids, and you're gonna see we have two pages of them. If you go to the next page. It should be skies. You're going to tap on that, and then it's going to see trans. Also, you saw simmer right there. You're going to tap on that. You're not always going to have a SID, but you will most likely always have a star. All right, so now that we have that inputted, we need to go to departure arrival again. We need to go to arrival. So, as we saw, my star was Gilco 4. It's right there. Tap on that. And also, um, we need to input the runway. So I was 15 right. We're going to go ILS 15 right. So ILS is going to have you, it's going to 
have you put in a frequency, which I'm gonna show you later, gonna have you put in a frequency, that's gonna basically du uh, direct you into the run mic. So we're gonna tap on that, and then we're pretty much done in putting this into the computer. We're gonna click activate and execute, and there we go. Now if we go to legs, it's gonna show some stuff up. All right, so now if you see any vectors what you need to do is you need to take this into your scratch pad, the one below it, and put it in the vector. It's going to say mod and hit execute again. That basically what a vector means is you're getting instruction from ATC. And since there's not real ATC in this game, you want to take all the vectors out. All right, so net right here, as we saw, if you get a discontinuity right here, you're going to put the one below it and put it in there, mod execute. And we're going to do the same thing with vector again, execute, and it's going to make your root go very nicely. So you're going to see we have runway 15 right here, and we have Gilco and all the um, main um, waypoints and suits and stars right in here. So you go to next page. It's also going to show you your um, basically go around. So if you have to touch and go or miss the runway, you can go around there. So I'm going to go next page. So, also a nicer way to see it on your map right here is if you go up here, click plan for flight plan, um, and if you see this thing change, then it goes step, and it shows you on the map, step, it's going to guide you, the runway is right here, and it's going to guide you into the runway. I know that turn looks a little steep, it's really not, and also try and wait till the latest second to turn autopilot off, and I'm going to show you that in one sec. Wait to the latest second. All right. In the next video, I'm going to go over ILS landings, and that will instruct you on what you what to do once you basically make this turn and are right into the runway. Alrighty, guys. Now that the flight plan is input into the FMC right here, we're going to go ahead and taxi out, and I will meet you guys on the runway. Alrighty guys, we are on the runway after taxiing right now, and there's just one or two more things we have to do before we begin. So, first we have to change this altitude to our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. Went way over there, there you go. And also you have to change this to your cruising altitude, 36,000 feet as well. All right, so last thing we need to do is change the flaps to five. I cannot see them right now. Change flaps to five, okay. Why is, or why are you not working? My flaps thing is not working. There you go, that was weird. All right, Um. so now, um, we have to turn the flight directors on, and this on, and then we should be ready to go. So, we're going to release the parking brake, get ready, and if you hit, um, N1, we should start powering up. I like to have my view so that I can see the, um, alright, at uh, the speed of, what was it? 156, we're going to rotate. Okay, 80 knots. And then when we hear the co pilot say positive rate, we're going to bring the gear in. And at 1,000 feet, we're going to activate the autopilot. start rotating and as you can see on the gyroscope below me we're gonna go up to 15 degrees the line in between 10 and 20 try and level out as much as possible we're gonna climb to 1,000 feet pretty quickly and you just called out positive rate so I'm gonna bring gear up going upwards to 700 feet all right 900 and we are at 1,000 feet. We're going to turn on LNAV, VNAV, and command. And now we are on autopilot. 
not touching the controls at all. It's going to perfectly align us with this line. And we're going to turn the flaps back to zero so we can um, climb properly. But for the rest of the flight, um, the only other thing you have to do is the altitude right here. Once you hit 36,000 feet, you got to turn that back down to zero. And that will not descend because unless you click the flight ch uh, level change button, it's not going to descend. So it'll stay there until it's supposed to descend. During the flight, autopilot will take over 99% of the functions. And my tutorial video coming out tomorrow or the day after is going to be all about ILS landings and landings. And so yeah, you guys have a great time and see you in the next video.